Bhante, how important is studying the Abhidhamma Pitaka to the practice of Vipassana? Some dismiss it by saying that the Abhidhamma was preached to the Devas and Brahmas and that the Sutta Pitaka is enough for us humans. Um, right. I like to consider that the Tipitaka in its entirety is um, is really best used used by a teacher to pass on the teaching. A person who reads the Tipitaka without a teacher, I would say whether it be whatever whatever Pitaka it be, is um, in danger of misunderstanding the teachings for so many reasons. One, of course, is the translation. So unless you're accessing the Pali, there's always that, that you read a certain translation and it, um, it can throw you off based on your understanding of the words and the, the translator's understanding of the Pali and so on. But the teachings, for example, the suttas, can throw you off because they're designed. They're, they're, some of them, some of them, many of them, are were uh, directed at a particular audience, and that audience may not be you, and it may not be universal. So some people, I think the Buddha even said this, that some people mistake a, un a specific teaching for a universal teaching, and some people mistake a universal teaching for a specific teaching. And so you'll say, well, the Buddha said this, and that contradicts this, and it can even lead, of course, to to doubting the Buddha, uh, but because you see one in one place he says one thing, in another place he seems to say another thing. With the Abhidhamma, uh, because it's so terse, in fact, if you study the Abhidhamma, um, the the potential for for misunderstanding is is great. Uh, you know, mostly, I would say the potential for getting lost is great and getting discouraged and giving up. So, long story short, I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much emphasis on the importance of studying Abhidhamma unless you're a teacher who has been given the teachings by a a teacher yourself and is one and is interested in using these teachings to explain uh, some of the experiences that come up in meditation which the Abhidhamma is able to do it's able to categorize and help us to to stay on the on the straight and narrow for so so in um it, it is possible that they work together in this way most especially for a teacher because where the sutta pitaka is vague and and inexact the Abhidhamma can sharpen it up and uh, so they can work together. And I guess if I was going to say anything, that the three pittikas should or do work very well together. Obviously, many people say that Abhidhamma is not even the Buddha's teaching. Some people say it's, um, it's, 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 it goes against the Buddha's teaching even. Um, but I would say it, it, it complements the suttas quite nicely. Because if you just read the suttas, you're reading talks that the Buddha gave to audiences. If you read the Abhidhamma, you're reading theory, very specific and exact theory. Now, whether you agree with that theory or believe it was the Buddha's theory, that's another thing. Uh, and the Vinaya, of course, without the Vinaya, uh, just reading the suttas without the Vinaya uh, deprives you of the base of morality, which is essential for keeping you on the right track and, and making sure that the meditation that you do cultivate is grounded in the wholesomeness, which uh, the Vinaya Pitaka does. So I would say if you're going to read them all, but don't certainly rely on the Pitaka, um, much more rely on, um, well, maybe not much more, but at least as much rely on the teacher, because then of course the other problem is how do you know that the teacher is going by the Buddhist teaching? There, there's no easy answer to that, um, but, but of course your question was simply the importance of studying the Abhidhamma, where is its place, I would say, in helping to um, m straighten the or, or direct the Sutta Pitaka and keep it from, get, from running astray because you've got categories and you've got lots of 
um, very specific and exact guidelines for what is real and, and what, what, it, what fits what, where, what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, and so on and so on. There, there's very strict guidelines that keep, that allow you to, to answer some of the questions that are posed by the Sutta Pitaka, for example. Um, but in studying Vipassana, not really important, unless you don't have a teacher. If you don't have a teacher at all, then uh, all you've got is the the the, the uh, Tupitaka, I would say, all three of them go together and, and have an equal importance, or have an importance, how equal it is, I can't say, but are, are important, and, and it seems to me fairly equal, the importance of the three. I think if you give up the Abhidhamma, you're running in danger of, of the ambiguity of the ambiguity of the suttas.